Right, members, I think we're all here. I'm about to go live, so I'm about to switch the recording on. Before I go into the agenda proper, there's just a few things I'd like to say from the chair. Um, one, this is my last meeting in the current year as chair. Can I say that it has been a strange year, I think, for all of us because the environment that we've been working in virtually, uh, it's nice actually to come in uh, in person now in this one, though we still are doing streaming. So just, just be aware if you want to speak, the touch screen here will indicate um, speakers. So just use the button as normal in front of you and use your minute pad, your computers as per normal. The recording will, will pick up everything else uh, and we'll see where we go. I fortunately have a, a double screen up here in front of me, which has got all the information as well. So that's why I'm a wee bit blanked out for some of those in front of me. Um, I'd like to say, I'd like to thank you as members for what you've actually done to help aid the business of committee throughout the past year. It hasn't been easy. Um, even uh, Darren, I'll get on to that. The officers have been learning how to deal with things. And in actual fact, I, I think it has helped um, the, the way it's streamed, the efficiency of the committee. And I think we've learned from that and we'll probably go forward. Um, it hasn't been easy and you've played your part because we had to make sure legislatively that everybody was in the meeting and we were able to carry on. So thank you very much indeed for that. We've had good discussion as usual throughout the year and I hope to continue that. When I go to the back benches, the incoming chair from Sinn Féin, I hope I won't give too much trouble when I'm down there in the cheap seats to whoever is sitting up here in the uh, elevator position. Um, so thank you members. I would like to thank the officers for all the work that they have put in to actually ensure that the business was done, was completed and was done efficiently and effectively. And they have done it. Uh, we've had the switch over from Deidre to Sinead. And I have to say that has been a very seamless uh, handover. Uh, we were sorry to see Deidre go with the, with the experience that she had um, in all aspects of planning, not just in particular in development control. Uh, but that said, Sinead is her own person and she has brought her personality, her knowledge and breadth uh, to the job, uh, ably aided by Darren on my right, who is a very, very steady head, um, whilst he tries to help us as much as possible. Uh, when we decide, that's the decision and he goes with it because he is part of the team. Um, Sinead, you're fitting in very well, so uh, keep up. So thank you very much indeed. Just another point before I go into the agenda proper. Um, within the UUP grouping, we'd always made the decision that um, Councillor Smith would stay on as a two-year stayed and Councillor McClockery uh, would then take up the last two years. So welcome, Councillor McClockery, John. Um, I know you will actually give much to the committee. Um, don't be afraid to listen and learn and ask questions afterwards. Um, you're doing that before and in general council, you'll get there. It's a rewarding committee, um, albeit that there's a heavy burden on us to uh, make choices for our constituents. But I think the level of debate here compares way above to the level of debate in any of the other 10 councils. I'll say that. Um, as objectively as possible, but I think we all collectively do a very good job. Um, so thank you for that. Um, and I see a couple of speakers. I'll let uh, Councillor Thompson in first of all, before I start the agenda. Earl. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman and fellow councillors and officers all. It's uh, good to be back in, in the chamber in the Greens this afternoon. Long awaited, but we're here. And thank you for, for all the efforts to get us here. Uh, for, first of all, Chairman, can I thank you for your service over the, the past year as Chairman of this, this particular Committee of Planning, and um, particularly with regard to the most difficult year we have had probably in all our Council careers. So I want to thank you on behalf of our grouping and for, um, myself personally for all your efforts and commend you for the way that you conduct the business of this Committee. I would also like to welcome Sinead along. Uh, I know Deirdre was here for quite a while, and I 
look forward to working with you, Sinead, as well. I know we have been on screen together, put it together, but uh, we're now in person, so that's that's good. And also, I'd like to welcome Councillor John McLaughlin, who is taking over from Councillor Smith. I look forward to working with John as well. Thank you for letting me on there, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, not at all, Aaron. Thanks very much. Councillor Dehan, Joe. Well, good uh, afternoon, uh, Chair, members, Chief Executive and officers. Uh, um, it is wonderful to be meeting you all face to face. And uh, uh, I certainly have, have missed uh, the person to person contact, although the Zoom meetings, I thought, were very effective. Um, I, too, want to welcome you, Sinead. It's, it's, it's nice to see you in person and uh, look forward to working with you. Uh, and to welcome Councillor uh, McLaughlin to the Planning Committee. So, Chair, I really just wanted to thank you most sincerely for the work that you have carried out over the past year. I think uh, we can all agree that you have discharged your duties as Chair of this important committee uh, in a very efficient and effective manner. Uh, you gave good guidance uh, based uh, on your experience in conjunction uh, with our planning officers who are always there for advice. And uh, when the time was needed, uh, you pushed us strongly for decisions and decisions in this forum are not always easy or straightforward, but you certainly gave us good direction. I thank you for that and just want to put that on record, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joe. Councillor Garrity, Mary. Yep, thank you, Chair, and on behalf of myself and John and the SLP group, and just thanks for the year that you give us, Robert, and great to have Sinead and welcome John here. We're used to Darren, so um, it's a bit, it's a bit, we don't need to thank and welcome you, Darren, but we'll do it anyway. But um, just to say thanks, Robert, you are very competent and assured all year. You give us great steering, and uh, it's a big commitment in the Chair, and this committee is a big commitment, and I thank you for all your work. And I'd go as far as saying you're nearly not quite as good as the last chair, but you're definitely up there. So thanks again, Robert. The hairstyle doesn't match. Uh, I'll have to say that from the chair, Mary. Thank you. Uh, Councillor McGuire, Tommy. I will go to my uh, Robert, and, and thank, many thanks. And thanks for your, your service over the last year. As a fellow chair in the previous year, I, I know we've had a lot to endure, but uh, hopefully there was some things to enjoy, as I found it in my own experience. So hopefully it's the same for yourself, Robert. Uh, looking forward to more physical meetings in the year ahead and uh, with our party incoming chair hopefully it'll be as successful a committee as it has been in the last 12 months so and welcome to Sinead formally I don't think we, we did that at the uh, online uh, meeting so again uh, thanks Robert and looking forward to another pr productive year for the people of Fermanagh Noma. Yeah thanks very much Tommy. Uh, for the purpose of the tape uh, I'll just go uh, and let um, everybody know who's here so we have councillors Thompson, Robinson, uh, Coyle, Dehan, Garrity, Donnelly, Campbell, Rainey, McLaughlin, Maguire, and Feely, along with myself in attendance. Um, for the Pierce, for streaming of business, because Sinead is actually going to have to go out for the two call tonight applications under item three to bring speakers in and out, between application one and two, I'm going to take papers B and C, that's item four and five on the agenda, while Sinead is out. Um, they're mainly for noting, so we should be able to get those through. And we'll leave the uh, last couple of items until we deal with the second application. So uh, I'm going now to the agenda, uh, item one. Apologies, I've got one apology, and that's from Councillor Thomas O'Reilly. We will note that. Uh, item two, any declarations, members, as to items on the agenda? Okay. And I will say, um, on the second called in application, application number two, we may have to go into confidential because there are uh, uh, some items of confidential correspondence that the applicant and the agent may bring up. I'm not sure we will go in straight away at the start of the application, of we, where we may actually start and then we will go into a, to confidential, but uh, we'll make sure that that goes on. Um, so we'll go on to item three. Uh, we have two applications under item three. And the first application is LA10 bar 2020 bar 0662. And it's for the retention of a general purpose agricultural shed and all associated site works. And we have speaking rights. 
both from the applicant and agent, along with uh, three councillors in support. Thank you, Darren. Maybe if you just will wait until we get everybody in. Um, the way that we're going to work the business, because we're limited with regard to numbers in the chamber, the councillors uh, with speaking rights will be in the building, but in different locations. So they'll be coming in via WebEx. The agent and applicant will be actually in the room, as you can see here. Gentlemen, um, welcome. If you take your seats, I'll bring you in and explain the procedure when you are able to speak and take questions basically from the floor. Um, because you're sitting apart, uh, you can take your face masks or face coverings off if you want. Okay. Um, and I'll run you through the instructions basically of how you come in and how you go out. Yep. That's right. If you bring the mic down towards you, yep, that's okay. And leave it like that. That's better from the point of view of recording. So that said, uh, I'll hand over now to Darren. Darren, would you take us through, please? Uh, okay, members, uh, good afternoon. So application number one then is LA10 2020 662. It's a full application for the retention of a general purpose agricultural shed and associated site works. And the applicant then is Mr. Donnelly. The location is 150 metres northwest of 167 Alta Muscan Road and Six Mile Cross. So the recommendation at the moment is to refuse plan permission for the reasons listed within the report and subject to the three reasons. So I'll just take members through some of the issues and the details then. Um, so it's for the retention of an agricultural shed uh, and site works. Uh, the shed is six metres high. It's a four bay flooded shed and it's for the storage of agricultural machinery for the applicant's farm and also for part of his farm contracting business. There is an active and established uh, agricultural holding. The applicant owns uh, a significant amount of land. And the farm group then is about 115 metres uh, nearby. And I'll show that in a slide in a second. Policy issues uh, relate to uh, a few issues. Um, the first being that the building is not cited beside existing farm buildings uh, under CTY 12 and doesn't meet the exceptional test to allow a building away from farm buildings. The second reason relates to the size and scale of the building uh, and why it is essential for the efficient use of the holding. The shed is 56 metres long and 12 metres wide, the floor area of 684 square metres or about 7,300 square feet. Uh, the third issue then is that um, relates to farm diversification with the applicant making the case that the farm contracting uh, requires the building uh, and that is uh, farm diversification under c 2 11 it fails to meet these policies, though, uh, as the building is not satisfactorily integrated with the group of buildings in the farm. And finally, the last reason within the report you'll note there is that it doesn't fall within any of the range of types of development uh, which are acceptable in the countryside uh, and therefore is contrary to CTY1. So in terms of the, the slides, then, members, if you want to look at your screens, you'll see on the screen is the application site. And you can see the Altamoskan Road then is uh, the purple line running through the slide. The blue arrow then uh, shows the location of the existing laneway uh, coming off the Alta Muscan Road. That laneway runs up to the farm group at the bottom of the slide. And the site then is about halfway up. You can see it comes up the existing laneway and then turns right and moves across into the site. As I say, the applicant has an extensive farm holding. Uh, this is the farm map relating to the location of the farm buildings. And you can see the blue arrow then is the laneway coming off the Alta Muscan Road running up to the site, which is the proximate position of the purple star. So the block plan then uh, on the screen, you can see the uh, red rectangle is the location of the general purpose shed. As I said, it has been constructed, so it's for the retention of the shed. It's been dug into the uh, rising land at the rear, uh, and you can see the contours then showing the rising land immediately behind the building. There then is a flat area um, out to the front, and then a drop off um, uh, down into the agricultural field. The laneway then is a purple arrow on the right hand side. So it's just to zoom in a bit closer then, you can see the shed then with the rising land at the rear. And then in front of the shed, there's uh, there's an area there. So I'll come on to that in a second. So aerial photograph then, you can see the flyover photographs um, show the location of the Alta Muscan Road then, the laneway coming in, and you can see the concrete base and the footprint of the building uh, under construction. The long gray sort of linear rectangular shape is, is the, uh, sorry, I remember just 
There's a technical issue with the screen at the back. Okay, so I'll just carry on then. So the slide in front of you, then, members, is the aerial photograph. And the um, rectangular grey uh, shape is the location of the building under construction. The long linear shape, then, is the uh, runway that has been approved. Um, and that runs uh, across the front of the site. The building itself, then, is a four bay clotted shed. You can see the four peaks and the four pitches. Um, across the front and the rear elevation ends a blank uh, gable facing into the rear and the rising land. The two sides then on the top slides. The block plan then or the foot plan of the building then you can see it's 56 metres by 12 metres which is about 684 square metres. The um, building has four pedestrian entrances and those are marked by the arrows, the purple arrow running along the bottom. And then there are four doors on the front as well. And you can see those are identified by the, the arrows into the, the building. Uh, on this, the block plan, you'll note, members, there is, uh, in front of the red rectangle of the building, there is an annotation showing four laneways, um, which are established by quarry dust. So those are underneath the areas of the purple arrow. And those relate really to the uh, frontages of each individual shed and would be in front of each door for each shed. In between the quarry dust areas, it's annotated that the, those sections, the three sections, will be hard cored, um, but I think they've actually been grassed over, um, and uh, so they will actually be grass rather than hard core. So the photograph stands. So this is you standing uh, with the laneway behind you looking across to the building, and you can see the size and scale of it then uh, with the four peaks. An area to the front with the four entrance laneways, and uh, as I say, it's been grass rather than hardcore as per the plans. That's a photograph then standing at the side looking down the rear, and you can see how the building has been cut into the rising land at the rear with the embankment behind it. And again, a frontage uh, photograph showing the, the four individual doorways into the each unit, and you can see then the two of the uh, sort of entrance gravel entrances in front of each doorway. And then just another photograph standing looking at the building uh, in front of one of the gravel laneways. And you can see up to the left end is the farm group, which is the farmhouse and the farm buildings. So the building itself then uh, has two metre high pedestrian doors to each unit. Um, to the sort of entrance of the top of the uh, doorways is about 3.2 metres. As you can see, about 3.2 metres wide, uh, in height, sorry, uh, and the doors then will open approximately 11 metres in width. So that's just a, a photograph showing the, the front of one of the units. So you can see 3.2 in height and 11 metres across. Uh, to give you an idea of the 3.2, the, the trailer that's sitting beside it there is a good example of, of the uh, size of agricultural buildings. So these are photographs then that the applicant has uh, helpfully provided in their supporting statement. And they show the inside of the building. As you can see, they're sectioned off. So each unit is an individual unit. And uh, there's an example of the farm machinery that is uh, parked inside. Well, just back to the flyover photographs, you can see then that the location of the building is the, the grey rectangle. And the farm group then is further to the south where the yellow star is. Uh, on the site, there is a mobile building uh, approved as part of the runway uh, development, and that's the circle you can see uh, annotated on the slide. You then have um, the approximate position of an isolation shed, uh, as it's referred to, uh, and I'll show you pictures of those in a second, and that's identified as say, in the second circle with the farm group then at the bottom. So this is the mobile building for the runway. As you can see, uh, a mobile home building that has been cladded and is sitting on the site and is used as part of the runway development. So that has planning approval, there's no issues there. The isolation shed then you can see uh, on the left just in behind the hedge, identified by the purple arrow. And it's a small shed then used for uh, animals. The isolation shed is, is about 60 metres from the site of the building. Um, the nearest bit of the farm group then is up at the bottom of the screen. You can see there it's approximately 115 metres uh, between the two buildings. 
In terms of the farm group itself, uh, the grey dot in the centre of the screen shows the dwelling house, and then you can see the buildings around it. And the applicant then owns the lands uh, that are, uh, to the left in the darker green on the farm holding. When you're on the road, Delta Muskin Road, looking up to the laneway, you can see the farmhouse then, and there's a line of trees then, and the farm buildings are in behind the, the trees. So it is on the top of a, a fairly prominent location, um, but the farm buildings are well, well screened by the, the landscaping. The uh, building then is to the right of the slide, so if you're looking up the lane, you can see the mobile building then at the top of the lane, and you take into the right, you can see then the four roofs of the building. And then that's another view down in the Alta Muscan Road, looking up towards the site. So you can see the farm group then and the farmhouse with the four buildings then sitting in the middle of the slide. Uh, the agent has included as a within a supporting statement um, photo montages of the uh, building superimposed on the land farm up beside the farm group. And so you can see there the slide shows the four pitches uh, at the top of the ridge. And then you can see, I'll just show you the details. The difference then is on the second slide, number 30 there, you can see the grey uh, is the location of the existing buildings. So you can see them there on the slide in front of you. So the members, the recommendation then is to refuse planning permission for the three reasons. Uh, it's contrary to C2Y12. Um, sorry, that should be C2Y11 and number two then. So contrary to C2Y11, and that the building is not satisfactorily integrated with existing group buildings, and contrary to CTY3 then in number three. Thank you, Mr. We have now speaking rights from the agent and applicant, um, and then followed by representations from three councillors. Um, Mr. Stevens, you haven't been in front of the committee before. I'll just explain the procedure. Um, are you going to speak on Mr. Donnelly, or is Mr. Donnelly not speaking? It's just you. Yeah, just I'll. Mr. Donnelly's here for questions. It's okay. Right. Um, you have ten minutes. You have up to ten minutes, basically, to present, and thereafter, um, we may or may not, as a committee, pick questions to you, and then, and then we'll go forward. So, um, if you're happy, you've hit the button. You have ten minutes from now. Here you go. Chair, members, um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak in support of this application. Uh, I'm Andy Stevens of Matrix Planning, and I'm joined by Mr. Michael Donnelly, the uh, applicant for any questions. Um, the proposal, as you've heard, is for a general purpose agricultural shed, um, which is used with the applicant's farm and agricultural contracting business, which undertakes sowing, fertilizer spraying, um, cutting silage, and, and mixing slurry. The main farm group is located at number 167. Alta Muskin Road, as indicated on the accompanying farm maps, and consists of approximately 68.25 hectares. It has been accepted that there is an active and established farm business, and this has been confirmed by DERA. The nearest part of the main farm group uh, is approximately 115 metres south of the application site, and it is located on higher ground on the skyline. The farm group is uh, indicated by officers to be highly visible in the landscape. Um, the group consists of several large buildings, which are currently all being used for the existing farm business and are accepted by officers to be essential for the maintenance of the existing farm enterprise. When taking account of the modern purpose-built proposal, it is apparent that there are no suitable buildings on the existing holding that can be used, and it is accepted by officers that a new building is justified, as the agricultural machinery cannot, clearly cannot be accommodated in any of the existing buildings. Although officers have presented several reasons for refusal, these are all based on the predominant issue that the proposal is cited away from the existing farm group and their claim that there is no existing group of buildings at this location. The guiding principle in determining planning applications is that sustainable development should be permitted unless there is demonstrable harm. Planning policies are there to guide decision makers in everyday planning scenarios and require balanced consideration against the case specifics and all material considerations. The policies are not there, uh, are not a test of, of perfection, nor does the letter of the policy need to be slavishly followed, especially if a proposal meets the objectives of the policy and common sense 
points to refusal of permission being difficult to sustain, if not unreasonable. It is also an accepted principle that if there is any ambiguity in the policy wording, that the applicant is entitled to have their proposal assessed on the interpretation most favourable to them, as per the presumption in favour of development. It is our view that the planning officers have misapplied the policy and sought a higher test than, the, than, than is actually required within policy CTY 11 and 12, as I will outline. It is critical that policy CTY 11 and 12 do not provide a definition of an existing building or any amplification as to its size, characteristics, orientation, use, degree of permanence, or its position or relationship with, with the proposal. Section 250 of the Planning Northern Ireland Act 2011 states that the word building includes a structure or erection and any part of a building as so defined. The word building is taken in, the, in this everyday context. It is also a common case that a group of buildings are normally taken to be plural and means two or more. Under policy CTY 12, officers' concerns relate to the additional policy tests, which are only engaged if the proposal is not cited beside existing farm or forestry buildings. However, the wording of the exceptionality test of policy CTY 12 relates to alternative sites away from the existing farm buildings is much less prescriptive and onerous. All that is required is that the proposal is to be located at another group of buildings on the holding. Officers accept that there is an isolation building 60 metres from the shed, and this is a building on the holding. However, their contention is that the second building associated with the flying club is discounted as they claim it is not on the holding. The holding is defined by the accompanying farm maps for business ID 663184, which accompanied the application and consists of 68.25 hectares. These lands form the basis of the holding in policy terms. The approach of the, the officers that farm buildings and farmhouses are not included on farm maps and, and the farm holding is based on the agri-environmental scheme payments. However, nowhere in the policy wording of CTY 12 is this stated. The issue of existing buildings has been considered before in Appeal 2011 A0029, Appeal 2012 A0080 and Appeal 2013 LDC 005. All of those appeals concluded that it is clear from the policy that there is no requirement that any of the existing buildings in the group must be agricultural in design or use to be considered. Therefore, in the absence of a definition or direction in policy CTY 12, the applicant is entitled to the most favourable policy interpretation to their case. The wording of policy CTY 12 only requires the new building to be cited beside another group of buildings on the holding. And as such, the proposal complies with CTY 12 and the additional policy tests are not engaged. In respect of CTY 11, it allows for farm diversification where it is demonstrated that business is run in conjunction with the agricultural operations in the farm and where four specified criteria are met. The policy goes on to say that proposals will only be acceptable where they involve the reuse or adaptation of existing farm buildings. However, a new building may be permitted where there is no existing buildings available to accommodate the proposed use, and if justified, it should be satisfactorily integrated with a group, an existing group of buildings. The term run in conjunction with agricultural operations in the farm is not clearly defined in policy. However, it does not say that the farm diversification schemes must complement the farm business, that a proportion must be related to the farm, or that they must be located beside existing farm buildings. It is apparent that the existing buildings are predominantly given over to housing, livestock and feeds, and there are no buildings which can be reused or adapted. Officers accept that a new building is justified, but again contest the consideration of the existing group of buildings and the second building associated with the flying club being on the farm. However, the wording of policy CTY 11 is even more generous than CTY 12, in that it only requires a new building to be satisfactorily integrated with an existing group of buildings. Policy CTY 11 does not specify the building's use, design, permanence, or critically, that they should be on the farm. The thrust of the proposal of the policy is based on integration of new buildings in the landscape and to prevent individual buildings from being constructed. The proposal clearly complies with policy CTY 11. The building is therefore located to integrate with an existing group of buildings as demonstrated. When policy CTY 11 is considered in the round, it is apparent that the thrust is to promote forms of farm diversification that are sustainable in a, in a rural location and that integrate in the landscape. When taking account of Fermanagh and Oma's predominantly rural nature 
and the approach of the Strategic Planning Policy Statement and PPS 21 to support and sustain rural communities. The proposal is compliant with CTY 11. The proposal meets the policy requirements of both CTY 11 and CTY 12, and as such as is taken as a policy exception under CTY 1, development in the countryside. The officers have a duty to sustain the reasons for refusal, and whilst they have presented why the application should be refused, this is based on a misinterpretation of the policies of we, as we have highlighted. However, crucially, they have not demonstrated the proposal would cause demonstrable harm. Rather, they argue the proposal does not meet the letter of the policy. They accept that the building visually integrates in the local landscape and the design is sympathetic to the locality. There is clearly a balancing exercise to be undertaken, but this has not been done by officers. However, it can be done by you as the decision takers. I would please ask that you as a committee use your planning judgment and overturn the recommendation, attaching determining weight to the following, which are in the, in the applicant's favour. The lack of any, objectors from any objections from any statutory agencies or third parties. The proposal is sympathetically designed and well integrated in the existing landscape setting. The proposal will not have an adverse impact on the natural or built environment or, or third party residents. Um, it allows for segregation of agricultural machinery and animals. The proposal is satisfactory integrated with an existing group of buildings uh, as per CTY 11 and 12. The building is located to nestle into the slope rather than sit predominantly on the skyline. Um, the proposal can actually be constructed 40 metres to the south under agricultural permitted development, and there would be no significant difference to put it there or to put it at the main farm group. And finally, common sense points to a, re a refusal being difficult to sustain, if not unreasonable. At the end of the day, if matters are finally balanced or you are sitting on the fence, then you must weigh in the applicant's favour, taking account of the presumption in favour of development, especially when there is no demonstrable harm and there is an ambiguity in the policy wording. Thank you for your time, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Andy, you finished within the time. Thank you. Uh, members, if you would indicate if you have any questions for Mr. Stevens or indeed Mr. Donnelly, the applicant. If you could indicate, Anthony, and then I'll let you in. Yep, you can. There you are. There you had it. Just that's it. Pull yourself down. Uh, so, sorry about that. Thank no, you. you're okay. Thanks, Chair. And just before I start, just to say well done to you, here and Chair Robbie, you've done a great job running the Perry Tora, and best of luck to Sinead in the, in the coming year. Um, I was just um, do a bit of farming myself, so I can know the the story. You, you, you do need a place to store your machinery. I see a rain baler in it there. And, Stuff like that, laying out in the winter time is not good for them, and that you know, so you kind of know where you're coming from. It's, it, 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 you probably have slurry tankers and other stuff in there as well. But it's just one, then I don't know whether you're supposed to ask. Not, is, are you going to use it for cattle? Do you intend to keep cattle or sheep now, or maybe store hay or straw in it? Is it just totally for machinery? It's just one, then. Michael, could you uh, hold on? There you are, you're live now. Don't touch, don't touch. Go on. Uh, mainly machinery, but there are straw and havies in it as well, and some meal. Any further questions? Um, from the Chair, I have uh, one or two, just for clarification. One, what is the relationship that the Flying Club has with you as a farmer? They rent that bit of ground. And they use it, and we use ours. Just they have like a, as a cross community flying group, and they just have the use of the clubhouse and the runway. The clubhouse is yours, uh, oh. but no belongs to the, belongs to the club. Right. They only have the ground rented, so it's there. It's separate from the farming. Right. Okay. Um, any further? Oh, you have. Yeah. Councillor Donnelly, Sean. Thank you, Chair. Just a question for the applicant. Uh, I, as like Anthony there, I'm a small farmer, but I haven't got much machinery. But I know talking to uh, contractors and larger people, it's so important nowadays to have a good shed. And uh, for the machinery are so expensive and so hard to maintain, and keeping them in over winter and for maintenance of them, 
No, just I was interested in that uh, isolating house, you know, what the, what the story was it, you know? Uh, back, back a number of years ago, we there was a, a disease sort of in cattle was called yonis, and uh, we had a few animals that had it, and it was the department we had to put up the isolation shade to keep the them particular animals so so much distance away from the the rest of the animals until they were treated or done away with. Okay, Sean. Right, hold on. Yeah, come back. Thank you, Chair. Well, <coughs> uh, so was it the area or the Department of Agriculture are aware of that shed and happy with it? Would they look at it as part of the uh, the, the the farming business? Uh, well, it is part of the farming business because if we have an animal that's sick, that's where we would isolate it till that building. Like. It keeps it away from infection for all animals, Natalie. Recommend it to, to have, put up a building or keep an, what they class an isolation shade. A ventilated isolation shade, sorry. And as a small farmer, we know that animals have to be isolated at certain times. The point I'm looking at, you know, deer would be ha was happy with that there. So, in my opinion, I think, you know, would you... Would it, Am I right in saying that it would be part of the farm business, as part of not the farm business, but you know, the yeah. as such, it could play a role in the siting of the, of the sheds. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Councillor Reddy, Alan. <clears throat> well, thank you, Chair. And, uh, Councillor Donnelly just has asked my question, um, but I, I'm, go I'm going to uh, maybe uh, develop it a little further. And now that we know the the uh, the reason for the existence of the the isolated, as it's as it's called here, an isolated shed, uh, what distance is it from the new uh, block of buildings? Did I pick it up that it was uh, 60 metres and, and distance away? Yeah, yes, just show you 60 metres. And therefore, uh, what, is, what is the uh, recommended distance for would be, uh, you know, compliant? I, I, 70 or 75 metres, I think. That answered my question for the time being, um, um, Chairman. Thank you very much, Alan. Councillor Dehan. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Stevens, for a very comprehensive presentation. You covered a lot of ground, uh, Chair, in, in, in that presentation. I just wondered if uh, Mr. Stevens would mind uh, going over again the points that he made in relation uh, to uh, uh, the... the uh, location of the isolation shed, and I know other members have clarified it, and also the other buildings uh, which uh, belong to the Flying Club. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor, for your question through you, Chair. Um, yeah, it's quite quite a bit to take on board. Um, I'll, I'll maybe try and put it in, in, in slightly simpler terms. So the isolation building is, is at 60 metres, okay? So that's within the... the the 75 metre threshold that farmers can build under agricultural permitted development. Um, so that the, 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 the officers have no issue with that being classified as one building. So we, we obviously have to have two to have the group. So we've got the first building, there's no issue with that. The, the contention really of this whole case is on, on what constitutes the second building. Um, what, what we're saying is the policy is very flexible, um, particularly CTY 11. It basically says uh, that it needs to be near an existing group and, and it doesn't even say on the farm or anything and, and the policy wording doesn't define that it has to be an agricultural building so what we're saying is like the flying club building is clearly on the holding uh, it's clearly there and it's beside and it's grouped so therefore you have your two buildings and you meet the the, the, the emphasis of the policy i, I think the, the key point maybe that that would that, that sort of would, will highlight or crystallize this whole argument is that um we're only really arguing over 40 meters here 
So in, in essence, if the, if, the, if you decided to refuse today, we could take that building, put it 40 metres to the south up on the hillside and, and actually construct it under agricultural permitted development. Now, there's two points that come out of that. Firstly, that's going to be so much more visible in the landscape, which obviously the whole point of grouping is to integrate in the landscape. So it's kind of flies in the face and the, the, the officer's point slightly contradictory. This, the second point is it's no it's not really any significantly closer to the existing farm group there. It's kind of in, in the middle. So surely the overriding principle here is that we, we have a really well located site. And actually, when you look at the policy in, in the favorable way that it's supposed we looked at, the permissive way, we have the two buildings, the isolation shed and the building associated with the flying club. So hopefully that answers your question, Councillor. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, no further questions, and we'll go on to representations from the three elected members. Uh, members, um, are you all there? Yes, yes, we're all here, Chair. Yeah. Are you in the same room, Stephen, or? Yeah, I am indeed. Right. Well, will you know the score? Uh, you have five minutes between you. Have you split up the... Um, is it from oldest to youngest? Is that the way you're going? Or is it smartest to brightest? Or what is it? I'll just say, Chair, I'm going to ask so you can decide what way that's going to be rolled out there. So is that the end? There's something about ass and back. I don't know whether that is applicable or not, but I don't know how you got yourself into that mess, Stephen. Who started? Who? Yes, Chair. Right. I, 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 you have five minutes and you have approximately one and three quarter minutes each. Bert, I'm cutting you off when I say over to Mark Buchanan. You can please keep quiet. Okay. Are you ready to go? Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Your, your clock's running. These runway and sheds, they're all in a group on this uh, site. There was no excavation or work done on this site for the shed. That was already uh, there previously from the uh, runway it was formed. Uh, the sheds are uh, up against a 20, 25 foot bank and they're totally integrated. If we move to the top of the hill, if you had binoculars or even a sight them, you could see that from six, uh, six miles across. And the uh, vegetation and all that was around that house for shelter would have to be removed and a site leveled on the very skyline. There's also uh, turbines shown over the hill, which are the attraction. Anybody looks in, looks at them before they would be thinking of looking. There's, a shed or that has been built is dark green in colour and it blends in with the area and uh, there's a min very minimum view from the road. Uh, this is an extension uh, from the farm business and I would uh, contend and the, this, uh, the shed, the isolation shed uh, ties in with everything else as, as part of the farm yard. Uh, there is also a planned mission on the site uh, for a, a hangar for to uh, house the plane, and that will be quite extensive as well. So uh, I think any uh, a attempt to say that this uh, shed is not, uh, it's within 60 metres of the isolation shed. It, That's you, Bert, you're out of time. Councillor Buchanan, Mark. Thank you, Chair and, and members and officers. Um, well, I'm here to speak in favour of the application today. Uh, within the rural countryside, the key to any development is its integration into the rural area. And the current location of this development is proof of how a building of this nature can neatly integrate into an area of rising landscape. However, should this building be placed in a different location or within the 75 metres, I think the committee would agree um, it would be a dominant feature in the landscape and would not integrate. Um, and it would give the high visibility of the other buildings and the landscape at the location. This building is essential for the farm business and for the safe and secure storage of the farm machinery. And in relation to CTY 11, it meets the criteria set out in the policy and that it clusters with an existing group of two buildings, the clubhouse already developed and the hangar, which has received plan and approval. Committee, this development meets with both CTY 11 and CTY 12 of PPS 21. And I think you will agree with me having seen the photographs presented 
by the planning officer. So this is the most suitable location for the development in terms of clustering, integration, and nestling into the real area of such a rising landscape. And I ask you to give your support for the application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, I'll probably go back slightly on what I said uh, about you before, Stephen. Uh, in some circles, they keep the best wine to the end. So if you're a drinking man, uh, which I like wine, maybe you are the best. So away you go. I'd miss you and your role as chair, Robert, and everybody stand down after this uh, meeting. <laughs> I hope some members will have taken value out of Mr. Stevens' presentation. I feel it adequately addresses the planning officials' concerns and adequately addresses the reasons for refusal presented, thus allowing you, the decision makers, to reach a positive outcome for the applicant. The building in question has been cited where it has to be, so it may integrate into an existing group of buildings as required by, uh, by policy. This building is essential to the smooth run of the applicant's uh, farm, and from reading the report presented, they accept, uh, our officers accept, that this building is indeed justified and required as the agricultural machinery cannot be stored in any of the current buildings uh, at, the, at the other group. I took deliberately recently to visit the site, and one can only appreciate how well the buildings integrate into the current position, and how much they would protrude into the skyline if they were situated immediately next to the main group of buildings and that's been referenced there by the plan, the planner slide uh, 30, which shows the stark contrast between the two locations. The crux of the issue here is, I believe, is if there are any existing buildings to integrate with, and I think the agent has made a very powerful case in relation to that, so I don't want to repeat all that. However, I would appeal the members to ask any additional questions if you are still not clear on some of the points made. Following on from the statutory consultations, there's no concerns being raised by the agencies or from the, any of the neighbour notifications. The buildings have been designed in such a way to be sympathetic to the surrounding area and to integrate well with the surrounding landscape. It nestles naturally into the existing slope and is satisfactorily integrated into the existing group of buildings as required by policy and as demonstrated by the agent. As I said, Chair, in many previous meetings, I strongly feel that the plan policy should not be interpreted with such a rigid approach, rather than reaching recommendations which are in line with the sentiment or the spirit of what the policy tries to achieve. And I would agree with the agent when he says that if matters are finally balanced, you should weigh in favour of the applicant, especially when there's no demonstrable harm. Uh, with that said, Chair, I want to put my support on the table for the applicant and encourage you guys to reach a positive conclusion today. And with me a few seconds left, Chair, just to congratulate you on a good, successful year uh, as Chairman and I wish you well. Thank you very much, Chair. Stephen. Yeah, yeah, as always, rehearsed, you stopped within the time. And thank you very much to Mark and Bert. I think you're starting to learn to work within the time constraints as set by the chair. Thank you very much indeed. Um, hand over to Darren. Uh, so, members, just so, just to, to to clarify uh, some of the points raised there, the building where it's constructed is not permitted development, it's not agricultural permitted development, and it's too large to be agricultural permitted development elsewhere because uh, it's over 600 uh, square meters floor space. Well, nearly 630, I think it is. So you're allowed up to five. Uh, so it would not be permitted development just to lift it and move it closer. It would have to be reduced in size. Uh, so it would. In terms of the other issues raised, um, for me, really, it comes down to a number of, of critical points. And I think the agent has clarified those very well. Um, the policy here is C2I12, um, where a new building is required under C2I12. The policy says that the building is sited beside existing farm buildings. So under C2I12, it says, it says you must be sited beside existing farm buildings. So the question for members today is, is it site of site existing farm buildings? Uh, if it is, then you meet the policy. If it isn't, then you move into the exception test and you have to demonstrate that this building is essential for the efficient functioning of the business. Under farm diversification, uh, again, the agent is correct. The policy says that where a new building is justified, it should be satisfactorily integrated with an existing group of buildings. Uh, it doesn't, unlike C2I12, say there have to be buildings on the farm or existing farm buildings. It just says they have to be satisfactorily integrated with an existing group of buildings. And that's where there's a difference of opinion in that, in that officers consider that the aims and objectives, the name of the policy and the, the reason for the policy uh, is to allow farm diversification. So the new buildings should be on the farm uh, and therefore the new farm diversification buildings should integrate with existing group of buildings on the farm. This is not on the farm uh, for the reasons listed within the report. And therefore, for the, for the view of officers, is that it doesn't integrate beside existing farm buildings. And under C2I11, it's not integrated with an existing group of buildings on the farm. Uh, 
Councillor Deacon, Joe. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Darren, uh, for your comments. Um, I just wanted some uh, clarification. Really, Mr. Stevens, in his presentation, uh, made the case that if uh, these uh, buildings were to be located up close to the existing farm buildings, I'm not talking about the isolation shed or the, the, the airfield buildings, that it would in fact be much more prominent on the landscape. And Chair, I think uh, Darren did show us some photographs, um, which to me at least demonstrated that where uh, the, this uh, agricultural shed is located seems to integrate well within uh, at its present location or proposed location, but that if you were to put it further up on the hill, that it would in fact be very prominent. Uh, you know, so I would like Darren's comments on that. And in relation to the farm diversification, uh, the, the, the airstrip and the buildings associated with the Flying Club uh, are on ground owned by the applicant and rented out by the Flying Club, which would provide income for Mr. Donnelly. And so therefore, um, is, it, is it accepted that this development is, is uh, acceptable in terms of farm diversification? Uh, and therefore, can we justifiably regard the, the airfield buildings uh, as being part of the uh, farm group and therefore constitute a group, a separate group of farm buildings? Thanks. I've lost the screen. Yep, go ahead. Members, thanks. Uh, I'll just take you back to slides. Um, so, the just to remind everybody where we are in terms of the the development. So, the grey rectangle at the top of the screen then is the footprint of the building under construction, uh, and you can see then the farm lane and the isolation shed that's been referred to is about sixty meters away there or thereabouts. Um, the farm buildings in the farm group itself is one hundred and fifteen meters away, so you can see how close it is in relation to the the two existing groups on the building. When we're down at the road then, uh, looking up the laneway, you can see the farmhouse and the farm buildings um, uh, on the rise in the landscape, and they are prominent. There's no denying that they are visible. Um, the buildings are very well integrated, though, um, and the old house uh, sits well as a group. The whole point of the new PBS policy was to consolidate and cluster uh, and round off development. The idea being that existing development would expand naturally in the landscape, much as it would have done years ago, where a farm would have grown around the existing buildings. Um, so the, the, the view of officers is that to separate this building, these new farm buildings across and away from the existing group is something that the, the, uh, the idea of consolidating and grouping is not something that would be uh, considered to be in keeping with the planning policies. Looking then at the policy test members, as you say, CTY12, uh, and if you look at that slide members, the question before you is whether that building is sited beside existing farm buildings. And the agents making the case that you have the farm shed, the isolation shed, and you also then have the mobile building. The view of officers is, well, the mobile building is not a farm building. It doesn't have to be. It has to be beside existing farm buildings. That mobile is not a farm building under CTY12. So it can't be uh, sited beside that to meet the policy test. The new building must be sited beside existing farm buildings. And that's where the application falls in that it's clearly not. When you go to C211, though, the policy says that a new building is justified, it should be satisfactorily integrated with an existing group of buildings. And the agent's making the case here that this is integrated with a group of buildings. And the group of buildings then is the isolation shed, the mobile building, uh, and then in the future, you'll also have the other buildings at the site. So that's the questions before you today, members. The view of officers is clearly set out here that we would consider the separation away from the farm group uh, to be contrary to the policy. 
In terms of any of the alternative locations up uh, beside the existing farm group, that slide the agent has presented is the worst case scenario. So that's as bad as you can get it, um, uh, which for obvious reasons, I don't expect them to do otherwise. There are alternative fields up there, uh, and uh, I wouldn't have any doubt that you could find a, a site up there that would accommodate a building uh, as permitted developments so up to 500 square meters. Um, I would allow that building to sit in group with the existing buildings. It will be seen, but it doesn't have to be hidden. It doesn't have to be invisible, and we say that quite regularly. If it's sited up beside the farm group, it'll integrate with the farm group. It'll look like it's grown naturally with the farm group and be part of the farm group, as opposed to the application before you, which uh, clearly so shows the, the four bay shed away from the farm group. Councillor Cluckery, Joan. Sorry, I'm not sure whether this is an appropriate question, Chair, but if you allow me. Well, uh, I'll tell, tell you. Yeah, that's what I knew. <laughs> uh, I've heard a couple of the, the speakers reference that there's going to be a hangar built on this site as well. Do we know where that will be and do we know what size it will be in comparison of the shed that's the farm shed that's been that we're looking at at the moment? Trying to give you a slide. So the, the hangar then uh, on the slide in front of the hangars in the area, you can see the flatbed lorry, if you can make that out. You can see the mobile uh, building, mobile caravan sort of building there with the grey rectangle. And then there's a flatbed lorry, I think it is, beside that. So the hangar building is going to go in that approximate position there. Was it, that's a proposed building. That building hasn't been built. Uh, and when you're looking at the application and uh, determining whether or not the building groups with other buildings, there has to be a building there. That hangar might never get built. And that's the difficulty with, with relying on permissions that have not been commenced and have not been erected. Members, part part of the conundrum, um, I'm speaking from the chair, just throwing something out here, that you as the committee have to consider is weight has been attached by the agent and the applicant in regard to the hangar building, uh, the runway and the isolation shed. I think without going forward, I think the officers accept that the isolation shed is a building on the farm. The issue in front of you is what connection does a hangar building actually play within the greater scheme of things? It is located on the land in the possession of the applicant, um, quite clearly so. Um, what is the relationship then between it and the applicant is something you have to determine. I think some of you that have been on the committee uh, for two terms uh, may remember another application that came forward with a slightly different aspect but uh, some that we thought of. So that's all I'm going to say from the chair. I, I, sorry, I'll ask a direct question of, of Mr. Donnelly, um, if you don't mind. Um, cutting across you, Councillor Campbell. Um, you've said that the um, Air Club actually leased the building from you. Uh, the payment for that, if I could ask, you haven't actually presented this before the committee, uh, but I think it's a question that needs to be asked. How do you account for the payment from the Air Club? That's a funny situation because I, I'm interested in flying myself and well, you could just have twisted the whole thing upside down then, but go on, answer the question. At, at, uh, because I'm interested in, as a cross-community flying club and trying to create younger ones, uh, they have the use of the land and there isn't a payment because the land was available and it's also there for my use. So it's a voluntary thing as a joint club, like it's not a cross-community right. flying club, like. Okay, I'm going to let Sinead in at the moment before I bring you in. Sinead. Chair, it's just a point of clarification. I think just whenever the agent has been making his presentation and relying on the building, it's actually the mobile building that's existing there as opposed to the hangar that's the subject of the permission. So I just wanted to, to clarify that point. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I wasn't even thinking about the, the hangar. It was the, the building that was there already because it's being currently used by the flying club. So it's actually on the ground. 
Do you want to come back in, Miss? Um, I'll let you in for a point of clarity on the question asked, Mr. Donnelly. Thank well, you, Chair. Um, I, I think that the key the key thing is we've 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 all teased out the points, and I think we're happy there. There's maybe a couple of areas of divergence between himself and Darren, um, on on the PD side, um, but we'll we'll not get into those. The, the, the key thing I'm focusing on is policy CTY11 and policy CTY12 do not define what a farm building is. Uh, sorry, Anthony, you can't go back over it. You've already presented your case. You haven't been asked a question. So I asked the question directly of Mr. Donnelly in regard to the Blind Club. So no more clarification. Councillor Campbell, Glenn. Yes, For sir. Clarity, I had wanted to ask much the same question, just really to probe that relationship with the Flying Club. Uh, and I just wonder, was there any formal, you know, arrangement? As that, that, that'll be directed towards Mr. Donnelly. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, I mean, I would, I would expect Mr. Donnelly or the agent, you know, would, I, I want, if you like, to get as much information as you can, as you, as always. Yeah. Michael, I, well, the, the Flying Club, as you know, because of COVID, that's the reason the, the hangar hadn't been started. Uh, no, we're, we're not worried about the hangar, Michael. It's yeah, but the they seem, they seem to be think, wondering, is that going to be done or? No, uh, it's immaterial. It, it's not material at the moment because it's not actually done. So we can't. D we Darren can't was saying it. that it might never be built. Just I, to clarify I, that, you know, because of COVID, that's what was a hold yeah. up on it. Yeah. No, th that's immaterial to the, uh, the point that we're deciding at the moment. Right. There is no building on the ground. It's irrespective of whether it's going to be built or will it never be built. Yeah. It doesn't come into our reckoning. What we've asked for directly of you is the relationship between the Blind Club and yourself. My question was, how do you account for it? I think the clarification that Councillor Campbell now is looking for, do you have any relationship, any formal relationship uh, with the Flying Club? Is that correct, Councillor Campbell? Yeah, yeah, just for a bit more clarity, because I did notice the, the agent looking to get in, so I wanted to hear more on that. Well, I'm not letting the agent in on that. Sorry, go on. So, so clarity on, on what my, you know, I'm in the flying club as well, and, and that's, there, there's groups, and we, we work together. It's not. That's all right. Uh, Councillor Garrity, Mary. Yeah, well, I'd add another point, Chair, but I suppose, I suppose, um, First and foremost, thanks to the two gentlemen for coming here today, and particularly Mr. C Stevens for a, a, such a concise report. And, and, and sometimes we get people in here and it's very grey, and you made your point quite clear. There's certainly a different opinion yourself and Darren, and some of the officers may accept that, but your position was made quite clear. And as um, members, we really appreciate that. And thanks, Mr. Donnelly. Mr. Donnelly, on the back of that um, question, Michael, I think it was. The bottom line is, is there any financial um, crossover between you and the Fly and Club um, at any stage? That's my first question. No. OK, that's fine. Um, well, I accept that this is part of your farm um, and, this, and it's a complementary um, aspect of it. I suppose um, you're not certainly shooting yourself in the foot. It's uh, commendable that you treat it as a voluntary um, exercise and it says something about yourself. But Darren, if I, and our chair, what I was looking for is I'm struggling to see that picture of the where it's integrated. I can't see the ones in the people go back. I've seen the one where they're superimposed by the agent, hypothetically. Worst case scenario, that I can see. It's the other one. If I could remember, just take a quick look. I couldn't. Can we run through the slides? Yes, uh, Gary. Okay. You all right, Mary? Sir, chair, thank you. Okay. Councillor Donnelly, Sean. Good. Again, thank you, Chair. Just a small question for Dara. Back to Mary's point there, a different different slide. Did you show, uh, Darren, did you show a slide where, uh, maybe I took it up wrong, if it was put up beside the farm buildings? That's the one there. Now, to me, as Councillor Wilson said, you can see in the six by cross from there, where as it was down, where Mary was pointing out there, that's much more 
and a, you know, she's what would you call a more not visible area. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, just to, to, to give you a comment, uh, Councillor, on that, the policy test here is not that the new agricultural building must integrate. That is not the policy test um, because we have had many other applications where applicants have come here and they've argued their building integrates, uh, but uh, so they have been unsuccessful. The policy test is set out that your new building must group with the buildings. That's the key thing. So although this building integrates into the landscape because of the extensive earthworks is cut into the hill, it integrates, that's fine. The policy test was saying, does it group, or sorry, is it side beside the existing farm buildings? That's the question before you today under CTY 12. So uh, in terms of the alternative sites, the alternative sites are prominent. There's no uh, denying that. Um, but as I say, that slide is the worst case scenario where you have just lifted that building and, and put it on top of the hill. There's an extensive holding here. There's other lands up there. Uh, the design and the shape and the orientation of the building, the siding of it, et cetera, could be easily agreed. Uh, it will be seen, but it will look as a natural expansion of the existing farm group. As I say, and that's what the policy is looking you to do, to consolidate them the existing farm buildings and existing buildings in the countryside. So that clarifies it for you. Councillors, it's it's an issue with regard to policy interpretation. Uh, I can understand where Darren's coming from and where Mr. Stevens is coming from. Uh, the issue in front of us is the officers have three reasons for refusals. Um, the third reason under CTY1 will fall if we can justify um, reasons one and two if you're going to go against the proposition from the officers to refuse. And the issue the issue is, and I think it's been outlined by both parties, it's um, the interpretation of grouping beside existing farm buildings. And one has to decide whether the hangar building belonging to the Flying Club can be interpreted as um, a building within the farm group. Okay. Now, I have Councillor Deacon. Uh, so, just, just one final question, Chair, for yeah, Darren. Yeah, no, go ahead. It's a fine yeah, just, a, just for, for, for clarification, uh, because I think this is a key point. Uh, Mr. Stevens uh, is um, contending that uh, the, the CTY 11 and 12, the policy does not define exactly what is meant by a farm building. Now, I think a key a key question that we have to satisfy ourselves on as with, uh, is whether or not we can interpret that mobile mobile uh, um, flying club building as meeting the definition or or lack of definition of a farm building. Can we consider it as a farm building? Because if we can, we, we, we know that it is constructed on Mr. Donnelly's land. Uh, we know that it forms an integral part uh, of the ac flying activities that go on there. Mr. Stevens says the policy does not state exactly what is a farm building. So I would just like Darren's opinion as to uh, uh, whether we can consider uh, that mobile uh, uh, building as a farmed building, because if we can consider it in that way, then clearly we have a group of two buildings, the isolation shed and that mobile uh, uh, flying club building. Uh, and obviously that would then uh, provide the exception uh, to policy with uh, a, a group of buildings that this new proposal would cluster with. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so members, the, the agent in the support statement has uh, helpfully clarified that there is a difference between an agricultural building and a farm building. And the planning department would agree with that. Officers agree. You don't have to be clustered with agricultural buildings. It can be farm buildings. So that can include buildings that aren't what you would see animals in or storage of farm machinery. They can be other buildings. A prime example of that is the farmhouse. That's a farm building in the view of officers. Uh, for members to go forward uh, and say that it is side by side existing farm buildings, you would have to conclude how and demonstrate how that mobile building, which is used for the flying club, and there's no use of farming whatsoever in it, and it's not used by the farmer at all, you'd have to justify and set out why that is a farm building under CTY 12. As they under CTY 11, though, there is a difference in that it doesn't say it has to be farm buildings, it's just an existing group of buildings. And that's where if members consider it doesn't meet 12, but it meets 11, 
because your group or an existing group of buildings, then that's uh, for you to say. Okay, I'm going to push this on. Councillor Campbell, Glenn. <clears throat> Chairman, and uh, thank you um, for the clarification and for the information, Darren. Um, and I suppose this, uh, my interpretation of, of the policy is that we do have two buildings um, on the farm, um, not related, you know, certainly not directly related to farm. And one of them is, one of them isn't. The mobile building um, is related to the flying club. Um, but I believe under policy CTY11, I would interpret those two buildings as um, you know, being valid an existing group of buildings and, and therefore I feel that given that the integration is strong in this particular plan application, I feel satisfied that that the application meets CTY 11 uh, and I'm also um, satisfied that it that it's an exception under CTY 12. So uh, it's an alternative site uh, away from the, the main existing farm buildings if you like. Um, but it is essential for the essential or the efficient uh, function of the business. I think that uh, on balance, um, we can say that integration isn't um, as big an issue as it, it could be here. Uh, and for that reason, I feel that you know there isn't really alternative sites that offer you know uh, any great advantage in terms of the impact on the environment. I think uh, I do believe it's essential. Um, I don't believe there's you know, demonstrable health, but that's an or that exception. So that's an or. So it is essential for the essential run of the business, efficient run of the business. Uh, and if I'm content that the first two reasons for refusal are satisfied through CTY 11 and, and through that exception of CTY 12, um, CTY 1 then chairman would not be relevant. So I suppose given that that understanding of, of the policy. My interpretation, Chairman, I would make a proposal contrary to the officer's recommendation in this case that we would propose uh, that we approve this plan application, Chairman. That's okay. Thanks very much indeed. Councillor Cameron, Glenn, Councillor McGuire, Tom. Thank you very much. In fact, I'd be quite ha happy to second that because the, the point I was coming in on was the fact of the second building when the, uh, Mr. Donnelly indicated he, he gets no financial remuneration. It's a voluntary uh, contract with the flying club so there effectively that building is in the ownership of Mr Donnelly solely as a farm building the fact that he engages with the flying club and they have the use of it but he doesn't get any financial remuneration so I, I, it's, it's a strange kind of a contract but I'd be happy enough to say then that this building despite the fact that he and his hobby and his friends use it it's still a building belonging to him established on his farm so I'm quite happy to say again Right. Councillor Dehan, have you a different proposal? No, I, I just uh, was coming in to second That's Councillor okay. Campbell's proposal just to say that I, I do support it. I, I feel that this uh, uh, proposal integrates very well within the countryside. I believe the uh, uh, proposed building is essential for the efficient running of the farm business. And I am uh, persuaded uh, that we do have a, a a grouping of two buildings which we can uh, define as farm buildings and therefore meets policy CTY11. Chair, thank you. It's okay. Councillor Thompson, have you a different proposal? Yeah, uh, no, thank you very much, Chairman. I was just coming to support Councillor Campbell. Uh, I suppose at the end of the day, it's down to everyone's interpretation, but my interpretation is obviously uh, reason three falls anyway, and 11 and 12 can be met in my interpretation interpretation so that's okay uh, I'm happy to support uh, Councillor Campbell's uh, proposal thank you thank you Councillor Rayleigh Alan have you anything further I'm happy to uh, support that's the proposal okay. and uh, I believe that it integrates extremely well and uh, it is really essential for today's running of a farm business uh, we have we must get it into our head that uh, this is maybe the, the first of these that we'll see, but it's extremely important that uh, a building of that magnitude is uh, an important place for the storage and for the maintenance 
uh, of uh, agriculture machinery. That's great. Thank you very much, Lee. I have one proposition, and that's proposed by Councillor Campbell, seconded by Councillor McGuire, that we go against the officer's recommendation. The proposal is to approve the application for the reasons as stated by Councillor Campbell on refusal items one and two, and because of that, refusal item three will fall, the one under CTY1. Are you happy enough, Darren? I'm going to put yeah. that to the floor. Are we all agreed? Any dissension? That's unanimous for the record, all 12. Thank you very much indeed. Darren, do you want to come forward yeah. with um, conditions? Yeah, members, there's no conditions really necessary. Uh, roads um, had suggested planning condition requiring the provision of visible displays of 2.4 by 90 metres in both directions. Um, but as it's an existing farm and it's existing farm machinery and equipment, uh, I'd be content to no way intensification of the use. So that's not required if members are agreeable. So there'd be no planning conditions required. Uh, proposed and second are agreeable. Yeah, proposed by Councillor Gary, second by Councillor Thompson. All agreed. Thank you. Right. And the changeover of speakers between application one and application two. Now I'm drawing members' attention. We'll go on to item four on the agenda. And that is paper B. Uh, planning decisions issued in April 2021. Uh, any questions in regard to the paper? Uh, proposer, Councillor Thompson. Second, Mr. Councillor Dehan, Joe, thank all agreed. Hey, Chair. Thank you. Go on now to item five on the agenda, and that's the update on planning enforcement for April 2021. Any questions? Paper for noting. Could have a proposed and seconder. Proposed Councillor Robinson, second Councillor Coyle. All agreed. Great, thank you. Members, we're just waiting for the handover takeover here. Thank you. See whether we can get the Yes, we
Are we live, Damien? Good, thank you. Thank you very much. Short recess. We're going to application on uh, number two under item three, and that's LA 10 bar 2020 bar 01092. Uh, part of this is confidential, so I propose to go straight into confidential business right from the start. Councillor Thompson, Earl. If you need a proposal, Chair, yeah, yes. I'm happy to propose going to confidential. Councillor Dehan, second. Yeah. Right, we're in confidential, so I'm switching the recording off.
Thank you very much. Um, Kim, call upon you just to see what was dealt with in committee, please. Thank you, Chair. So while in confidential business, members considered application LA 10 2020 10920 and uh, agreed to approve the recommendation and the decision was approved unanimously. Thank you very much indeed. Um, Sinead, will you escort? Yep. Right, we've already dealt with uh, items four and five on the agenda. We'll go to item six, and that's to receive an update on application LA10 bar 2020 bar 0995, and it was an outline for a replacement dwelling. Darren? Um, yes, members, just really to give you an update, just for information. Uh, you'll recall uh, we had an application a few months ago for a replacement dwelling for Mr. Wilson uh, out the Gorton Road. Uh, so you're just out of Oma, uh, along the Gorton Road on the left, there was a large farm and the applicant applied for a, a house, uh, a replacement house. So the replacement house was in the farm group and he was looking to go to the area of the purple rectangle. Uh, that application members uh, didn't agree with the, or agreed with the officer's recommendation uh, and uh, asked us to look for alternatives. As part of those discussions, the agent, sorry, that was the site that he applied for. Um, as part of the discussions, uh, an, an alternative has been agreed, and you can see at the bottom of the screen there's a, gray rect a green rectangle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the applicant has uh, apparently welcomed that, uh, and the feedback from the agent is it's actually a better site than the one they applied for. So um, the uh, so the be a full application will be coming in for that. And, and as I say, members, it's an example of when we get the backing of yourselves, uh, we can find alternatives and we can make things work very quickly, and the applications can be turned around very quickly. So just for noting, members. Councillor Thompson. Yeah, thank you very much, Chairman, and uh, thanks, Darren, for the update there on that. That is good news, and that's what we're about, trying to mm -hmm. try and get these things across the line where possible. And uh, I welcome that people had the foresight to get on site and see what was, was there and what could be achieved. So I really welcome that, Chair, and I'm prepared uh, to propose the note. Thanks very much. Good of a seconder. Councillor Feely, Anthony, second. All agreed? Agreed. Thank you. We'll go on to correspondence, uh, item seven. And there's one piece of correspondence from Northern Ireland Water. Sinead, do you want to talk to that? Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, so it's just um, the, the correspondence is really on for, for noting. Um, insofar as we had a, a, an update from NA Water back in September 2020, um, the update that we have before us now, there has been quite a bit of change um, across a number of the settlements, um, not just in relation to um, the current planning status of, of some of the wastewater treatment works serving our, our settlements, but also in relation to um, the estimation of capacity based on growth factors so that would be really relating to our local development plan. So what I'm proposing to do is to take a detailed report to the next RNC committee, really just to set out what the differences are between those two reports um, so that members are, are clear about those. Um, Councillor Dehan, Joe. Yeah, thank you, Chair, and thank you, Sinead, uh, uh, for your report and your proposal. Um, Chair, I, I, I find this report extremely uh, uh, concerning. Uh, you know, even, even those uh, uh, developments which are traffic lighted as green, if you look at the footnotes, uh, it's clear to see that the sewage network is operating well uh, in excess of its design capacity and we've all we we've already had lots of debates uh, regarding uh, intermittent discharges from the sewage network the fact of the matter is chair that, that unless we can upgrade our infrastructure it really is going to uh, impact negatively on development and 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 as Sinead has said on our local development plan I would regard this as being a very urgent situation. And I know that in her correspondence, uh, uh, Marie McCartney had indicated her willingness to uh, maximize the collaboration between the council and that she was available to meet and discuss the documents. And I know we did have uh, a recent meeting and discussion. There are also references to uh, uh, budgetary constraints and and competing priorities but uh, I think this is a very worrying uh, 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 report indeed I mean I was wanting to propose uh, that we should uh, accept uh, Marie McCartney's offer of uh, a, a meeting with her and discussing the document and identifying 
priorities for this council area. Uh, I think that is something uh, that we, we should do. We can do it either as a planning committee or as a full council. Um, uh, but I would propose that, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McGuire. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Robert, it's coming in exactly on the same point as Councillor Dehan. They, they have said that they're available to meet and discuss. And given the gravity of, of the, the detail that's in here, yeah. I think it uh, would need to be brought to a full council committee. So, uh, as opposed to being the proposal to come back to the planning committee, if we could propose, or do we need to wait to the RC committee just to seek your guidance there, Chair? Uh, I think, that I think the same reports coming to R and C. Do we need to wait then to propose that we have a full council we'll meeting? Wait. Well, wait, wait. Sorry, we we as a committee, a statutory committee, can go forward. That, so, that, thanks. For your are you happy to go? Do you want to amend? Uh, well, with Joe's? a slight amendment, let I make the proposal that the, a full council meeting uh, be agreed for this meeting because yeah. of this uh, how serious an issue it is across the whole district. And are you happy enough for that? Want to council have a discussion? No, my, Yes, absolutely, yeah. Chair. I think it concerns all members, and I think it is appropriate for right. that meeting to be held, uh, uh, yeah, as soon yeah, as possible, probably. and with all all members. Okay, involved. well, it it can it, the letter can go immediately if we're agreeable. But uh, one more uh, speaker, uh, Councillor Bailey, Anthony. Th th thanks, Chair. Yeah, yeah, and just come in and agreeing with with, with Josephine and Tommy there. It's a major issue, and I know. Darren has got correspondence about it already. It's a major issue in my town, Garris. I know we're not going to go into all the areas um, today, but kept capacity down there with the with the with the sewer system and problems with Loch Melvin and, and so forth. And a lot of people don't really understand, and a lot of them is blame, blaming planning issues for it and blaming that those houses were built in the first place. They don't really get get the grips of the understand it. Like so, I just the sooner the better. We get a meeting with them. I know we've a meeting with them before, but. I was just wondering, is Darren any comment about it? Or what does he think about the, the issue as, as people being on to him? It's, it's just a major issue, you know, and it's going to get worse instead of better, you know? And the, the, the accusers have no money, I know that, but we just have to try and get something sorted. From Darren, if you could answer, and then we'll put it. Yeah, uh, so where, where these sites have no capacity, uh, developers then come along and say, well, we'll put in private treatment plants, uh, and that then gets around uh, the lack of capacity. That though does bring with it then issues maybe long term that people don't realise when they're buying their houses, um, so it does cause difficulties. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Coyle, and then I'm putting it uh, the proposal to the vote. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I John. totally agree with Josephine and us having a meeting. Um, PC twenty one is uh, is going to be rolled out, but. Over this last decade or more, it has been, you know, what wastewater has been uh, underinvested in, and uh, you know we will be making sure uh, this time that the council's uh, voice is heard for our constituents on the issue that it does need to be invested in, and the minister will do so, um, uh, and the executive I hope will find the money too. Thank you. Right, the proposal proposed by Councillor Dehan, second by Councillor McGuire, is to write back on the back of this, looking for. A full council meeting. Oh, Councillor Thompson before. Sorry, Earl. Yeah. Go ahead, Earl. Thank you, Chairperson or Chairman. It's uh, just an issue of clarification. Is this going to be a full council special meeting with the, with regard to this one yep. subject? Yep. Yeah. Happy enough to support that. Thank you. Yep. All agreed? Great. Thank you very much. No other nobody's in, uh, intimated me of any a any other urgent and relevant business. So I declare the meeting closed. Thank you very much for the participation as always.